This is Six of Crows by Leigh Bardugo. Chapter 1. Juiced. Juiced had two problems, the moon and his mustache. He was supposed to be making his rounds at the Hode House, but for the last fifteen minutes he'd been hovering around the southeast wall of the gardens, trying to think of something clever and romantic to say to Anya. If only Anya's eyes were blue like the sea, or green like an emerald. Instead, her eyes were brown. Lovely, dreamy, melted chocolate brown? Rabbit fur brown? Just tell her that she's got skin like the moonlight, his friend Peter had said. Girls love that. A perfect solution, but the Ketterdam weather was not cooperating. There'd be no breeze off the harbor that day, and a gray milk fog had breathed the city's canals and crooked alleys in damp. Even here among the mansions of Gerstrat, the air hung thick with the smell of fish and bile water, and smoke from the refineries of the city's outer highlands had smeared the night sky in briny haze. The full moon looked less like a jewel than a yellow blister in need of lancing. Maybe he could compliment Anya's laugh, except he'd never heard her laugh. He wasn't very good with jokes. Juiced glanced at his reflection in one of the glass panels set into the double doors that led from the house to the side garden. His mother was right. Even in his new uniform, he still looked like a baby. Gently, he brushed his finger along his upper lip. If only his mustache would come in. It definitely felt thicker than yesterday. He'd been a guard in the stud watch less than six weeks, and it wasn't nearly as exciting as he'd hoped. He thought he'd be running down thieves in the barrel or patrolling the harbors, getting first look at cargo coming in on the docks. But ever since the assassination of that ambassador at the town hall, the merchant council had been grumbling about security. So where was he? Stuck walking in circles at some lucky mercher's house. Not just any mercher, though. Councilman Hode was about as high-placed in Ketterdam government as a man could be kind of man who could make a career. Juiced adjusted the set of his coat and rifle, then patted the weighted baton at his hip. Maybe Hode would take a liking to him. Sharp-eyed and quick with the cudgel, Hode would say, that fellow deserves a promotion. Sergeant Juiced Van Pohl, he whispered, savoring the sound of his words. Captain Juiced Van Pohl. Stop gawking at yourself. Juiced whirled, cheeks going hot as kank, and Rutger strode into the side garden. They were both older, bigger, and broader of shoulder than Juiced. And they were house guards, private servants of Councilman Hode. That meant they wore his pale green livery, carried fancy rifles from Novi Gem, and never let Juiced forget he was a lowly grunt from the city watch. Petting that bit of fuzz isn't going to make it grow any faster, Rutger said with a loud laugh. Juice tried to summon some dignity. I need to finish my rounds. Rutger elbowed Hank. That means he's going to go stick his head in the Grisha workshop to get a look at his girl. Oh, Anya, won't you use your Grisha magic to make my mustache grow? Hank mocked. Juice turned on his heel, cheeks burning, and strode down the eastern side of the house. They'd been teasing him ever since he'd arrived. If it hadn't been for Anya, he probably would have pleaded with his captain for a reassignment. He and Anya had only ever exchanged a few words on his rounds, but she was always the best part of his night. And he had to admit, he liked Jode's house too. The few peaks he'd managed through the windows, Hode had one of the grandest mansions on the Gillerstrat. Floors set with gleaming squares of black and white stone, shining dark wood walls lit by brown glass chandeliers that floated like jellyfish near the coffered ceilings. Sometimes, Juiced liked to pretend that it was his house, that he was a rich mercher just out for a stroll through his fine garden. Before he rounded the corner, Juiced took a deep breath. Anya, your eyes are brown like tree bark? He'd think of something. He was better off being spontaneous anyways. He was surprised to see the glass-paneled doors to the Grisha workshop open, more than the hand-painted blue tiles in the kitchen or the mantles laden with potted tulips. This workshop was a testimony to Hode's wealth. Grisha indentured didn't come cheap, 
and Hode had three of them. But Yuri wasn't seated at the long work table, and Anya was nowhere to be seen. Only Rhett Vonko was there, sprawled out on a chair in a dark blue robes, eyes shut, a book open on his chest. Juiced hovered in the doorway, then cleared his throat. These doors should be shut and locked at night. House is like a furnace, Redvo drawled without opening his eyes. His Ravkin accent sick and rolling. Tell Hode I stop sweating, I close doors. Redvenko was a squalor, older than the other Grisha indentured, his hair shot through with silver. There were rumors he'd fought for the losing side in Ravka's civil war and had fled to Kerch after the fighting. I'd be happy to present your complaints to Councilman Hode, Juice lied. The house was always overheated, as if Hode were under obligation to burn coal, but Juice wasn't going to be the one to mention it. Until then. You bring news of Yuri? Retvenko interrupted finally opening his heavily hooded eyes. Juiced glanced uneasily at the bowls of red grapes and heaps of burgundy velvet on the work table. Yuri had been working in bleeding color from the fruit into the curtains for Mistress Hode, but he had fallen badly ill a few days ago, and Juiced hadn't seen him since. Dust had begun to gather on the velvet, and the grapes were going bad. I haven't heard anything. Of course you hear nothing too busy strutting around in a stupid purple uniform. What was wrong with his uniform? And why did Red Venko even be here? And why did Red Venko even have to be here? He was Hode's personal squalor and often traveled with the merchant's most precious cargoes, guaranteeing favorable winds to bring the ship safely and quickly to harbor. Why couldn't he be away at sea now? I think Yuri might be quarantined. So helpful, Retvenko said with a sneer. You can stop craning neck like hopeful goose, he added. Anya is gone. Juice felt his face heat again. Where is she? he asked, trying to sound authoritative. She should be in after dark. One hour ago, Hode takes her. Same night, he came for Yuri. What do you mean, he came for Yuri? Yuri fell ill. Hode comes for Yuri. Yuri come back sick. Two days later, Yuri vanishes for good. Now Anya. For good? Maybe there was an emergency. If someone needed to be healed, first Yuri, now Anya. I will be next, and no one will notice except for poor little Officer Juiced. Go now. If Councilman Hode, Retvenko raised an arm, and a gust of air slammed Juice backwards. Juiced scrambled to keep his footing, grabbing for the doorframe. I said now. Retvenko etched a circle in the air, and the door slammed shut. Juice just let go in time to avoid having his fingers smashed and toppled into the side garden. He got to his feet as quickly as he could, wiping muck from his uniform, shame squirming in his belly. One of the glass panes in the door had cracked from the force. Through it, he saw the squalor smirking. That's counting against your indenture, Juice said, pointing to the ruined pane. He hated how small and petty his voice sounded. Retvenko waved his hand, and the doors trembled on their hinges. Without meaning to, Juice took a step back. Go and make your rounds, little watchdog, Retvenko called. That went well, snickered Rucker, leaning against the garden wall. How long had he been standing there? Don't you have something better to do than follow me around? Juice asked. All guards are to report to the boathouse, even you. Or are you too busy making friends? I was asking him to shut the door. Rutger shook his head. You don't ask. You tell. They're servants, not honored guests. Juiced fell into step beside him, inside still churning with humiliation. The worst part was that Rutger was right. Retvenko had no business talking to him that way. But what was Juiced supposed to do? Even if he'd had the courage to get into a fight with a squalor, it would likely be brawling with an expensive vase. The Grisha weren't just servants. They were Hode's treasured possessions. What had Retvenko meant about Yuri and Anya being taken away? Had he been covering for Anya? Grisha indentured were kept to the house for good reason. 
to walk the streets without protection was to risk getting plucked up by a slaver and never seen again. Maybe she's meeting someone, Joost speculated miserably. His thoughts were interrupted by the blaze of light and activity down by the boathouse that faced the canal. Across the water, he could see other fine merchant houses, tall and slender, the tidy gables of their rooftops making a dark silhouette against the night sky, their gardens and boathouses lit by glowing lanterns. A few weeks before, Joost had been told that Hoed's boathouse would be undergoing improvements and to strike it from his rounds. But when he and Rutger entered, he saw no paint or scaffolding. The gondols and oars had been pushed against the walls. The other house guards were there in their sea green livery, and Juice recognized two Stadwatch guards in purple. But most of the interior was taken up by a huge box, a kind of free standing cell that looked as if it was made from reinforced steel. It seems thick with rivets a huge window embedded in one of its walls. The glass had been wavy, bent, and through it, Juice could see a girl seated at a table, clutching her red silks tight around her. Behind her, a stad watch guard stood at attention. Anya, Juice realized with a start. Her brown eyes were wide and frightened, her skin pale. The little boy sitting across from her looked doubly terrified. His hair was sleep-tousled, and his legs dangled from the chair, kicking nervously at the air. Why all the guards? asked Joost. There had had to be more than ten of them crowded into the bone house. Councilman Hode was there, too, along with another merchant Joost didn't know, both of them dressed in mercer black. Joost stood up straighter when he saw that they were talking to the captain of the stad watch. He'd hoped to get all the garden mud from his uniform. What is this? Rutger shrugged. Who cares? It's a break in the routine. Juice looked back through the glass. Anya was staring out at him, her gaze unfocused. The day he had arrived at Hoed's house, she'd healed a bruise on his cheek. It had not been nothing. The yellow-green remnants of a crack he'd taken to the face during training exercise. But apparently Hoed had caught sight of it and didn't like his guards looking like thugs. Juice had been sent to the Grisha workshop, and Anya had sat him down on a bright square of late winter sunlight. Her cool fingers had passed over his skin, and though the itch had been terrible, bare seconds later, it was as if the bruise had never been. When Juice had thanked her, Anya had smiled and Juice was lost. He knew his cause was hopeless. Even if she had had any interest in him, he could never afford to buy her indenture from Hode, and she would never marry unless Hode decreed it but it hadn't stopped him from dropping by to say hello or bring her little gifts. She'd liked the map of Kirch Best, a whimsical drawing of their island nation, surrounded by mermaids swimming in the true sea and ships blown along by the winds depicted as fat-cheeked men. It was a cheap souvenir, the kind tourist spot along the east stave, but it had seemed to please her. Now, he risked raising a hand in greeting. Anya showed no reaction. She can't see you, moron, laughed Rutger. The glass is mirrored on the other side. Joost's cheeks pinked. How was I to know that? Open your eyes and pay attention for once. First Yuri, now Anya. Why do they need a Grisha healer? Is that boy injured? He looks fine to me. The captain and Hode seemed to reach some kind of agreement. Through the glass, Joost saw Hode enter the cell and give the boy an encouraging pat. There must have been vents in the cell because he heard Hode say, Be a brave lad, and there's a few crudge in it for you. Then he grabbed Anya's chin with the liver-spotted hand. She tensed, and Juice's gut tightened. Hode gave Anya's head a little shake. Do as you're told, and this will soon be over, yeah? Juice gave a small, tight smile. Of course, uncle. Hode whispered a few words to the guard behind Anya and then stepped out. The door shut with a loud clang, and Hode slid a heavy lock into place. Hode and the other merchant took positions almost directly in front of Joost and Rutger. The merchant Joost didn't know said, You're sure this is wise? This girl is a corp link. After what happened to your fabricator, if it was Rhett Venko, I'd be worried. But Anya has a sweet disposition. She's a healer, not prone to aggression. 
and you've lowered the dose? Yes, but we're agreed that if we have the same results as the fabricator, the council will compensate me? I can't be asked to bear that expense. When the merchant nodded, Hode signaled to the captain, Proceed. The same results as the fabricator. Red Fenko claimed Yuri had vanished. Was that what he'd meant? Sergeant, said the captain, are you ready? The guard inside the cell replied, Yes, sir. He drew a knife. Juice swallowed hard. First test, said the captain. The guard bent forward and told the boy to roll up his sleeve. The boy obeyed and stuck out his arm, popping the thumb of his other hand into his mouth. Too old for that, thought Juiced, but the boy must have been very scared. Juiced had slept with a sock baron till he was nearly fourteen, a fact that his older brothers had mocked mercilessly. This will sting just a bit, said the guard. The boy kept his thumb in his mouth and nodded, eyes round. This really isn't necessary, said Anya. Quiet, please, said Hode. The guard gave the boy a pat, then slashed a bright red cut across his forearm. The boy started crying immediately. Anya tried to rise from her chair, but the guard placed a stern hand on her shoulder. It's all right, Sergeant. Let her heal him. Anya leaned forward, taking the boy's hand gently. Shh, she said softly. Let me help. Will it hurt? The boy gulped. She smiled. Not at all. Just a little itch. Try to hold still for me? Juiced found himself leaning closer. He'd never actually seen Anya heal someone. Anya removed a handkerchief from her sleeve and wiped away the excess blood. Then her fingers brushed carefully over the boy's wound. Juiced watched in astonishment as the skin slowly seemed to reform and knit together. A few minutes later, the boy grinned and held out his arm. It looked a bit red, but was otherwise smooth and unmarked. Was that magic? Anya tapped him on the nose. Of a sort, the same magic your own body works when given time and a bit of bandage. The boy looked almost disappointed. Good, good, said Host impatiently. Now, the param. Juiced frowned. He'd never heard that word. The captain signaled to his sergeant. Second sequence. Put out your arm, the sergeant said to the boy once again. The boy shook his head. I don't like that part. Do it. The boy's lower lip quivered, but he put out his arm. The guard cut him once more. Then he placed a small wax paper envelope on the table in front of Anya. Swallow the contents of the packet, Hode instructed Anya. What is it? She asked, voice trembling. That isn't your concern. What is it? She repeated. It's not going to kill you. We're going to ask for you to perform some simple tasks to judge the drug's effects. The sergeant is there to make sure you do only what you're supposed to do, and no more. Understood? Her draw set, but she nodded. No one will harm you, said Hode. But remember, if you hurt the sergeant, you have no way out of that cell. The doors are locked from the outside. What is that stuff? whispered Juiced. I don't know, said Redger. What do you know? he muttered. Enough to keep my traps shut. Juiced scowled. With shaking hands, Anya lifted the wax envelope and opened the flap. Go on, said Hode. She tipped her head back and swallowed the powder. For a moment she sat, waiting, lips pressed together. Is it just Jerna? she asked hopefully. Juiced found himself hoping too. Jerna was nothing to fear. A stimulant everyone chewed, to stay awake on late watches. What does it taste like? Hode asked. Like Jerda, but sweeter, it... Anya inhaled sharply. Her hands seized the table, her pupils dilating enough that her eyes looked nearly black. Oh, she said, sighing. It was nearly a purr. The guard tightened his grip on her shoulder. How do you feel? She stared at the mirror and smiled. Her tongue peeked through her white teeth, stained like rust. Juiced felt suddenly cold. Just as it was with the fabricator, murmured the merchant. Heal the boy. Hode commanded. She waved her hand through the air, the gesture almost dismissive, and the cut on the boy's arm sealed instantly. The blood lifted briefly from his skin in droplets of red, then vanished. His skin looked perfectly smooth, all trace of blood or redness gone. The boy beamed. That was definitely magic. 
It feels like magic, Anya said with the same eerie smile. She didn't touch him, marveled the captain. Anya, said Hode, listen closely. We're going to tell the guard to perform the next test now. Mmm, hummed Anya. Sergeant, said Hode, cut off the boy's thumb. The boy howled and started to cry again. He shoved his hands beneath his legs to protect them. I should stop this, Juice thought. I should find a way to protect her, both of them. But what then? He was a nobody, new to the stad watch, new to this house. Besides, he discovered in a burst of shame, I want to keep my job. Anya merely smiled and tilted her head back so she was looking at the sergeant. Shoot the glass. What did you say? asked the merchant. Sergeant, the captain barked out. Shoot the glass, Anya repeated. The sergeant's face went slack. He cocked his head to one side as if listening to a distant melody, then unslung his rifle and aimed at the observation window. Get down, someone yelled. Juice threw himself on the ground, covering his head as the rapid hammer of gunfire filled his ears and bits of glass rained down on his hands and back. His thoughts were a panicked clamor. His mind tried to deny it, but he knew what he'd just seen. Anya had commanded the sergeant to shoot at the glass. She'd made him do it, but that couldn't be. Grisha Korpelki specialized in the human body. They couldn't stop your heart, slow your breathing, snap your bones. They couldn't get inside your head. For a moment, there was silence. Then Joost was on his feet with everyone else reaching for his rifle. Hode and the captain shouted at the same time, Subdue her! Shoot her! Do you know how much money she's worth? Hode retorted. Someone restrain her! Do not shoot! Anya raised her hands, red sleeves spread wide. Wait, she said. Joost's panic vanished. He knew he'd been frightened, but his fear was a distant thing. He was filled with expectation. He wasn't sure what was coming or when, only that it would arrive and that it was essential he'd be ready to meet it. It might be good, it might be bad. He didn't really care. His heart was free of worry and desire. He longed for nothing, wanted for nothing. His mind silent, his breathing steady. He only needed to wait. He saw Anya rise and pick up the little boy. He heard her crooning tenderly to him. Some rat gawken lullaby. Open the door and come in, Hode, she said. Juiced heard the words, understood them, forgot them. Hode walked to the door and slid the bolt free. He entered the steel cell. Do as you're told, and this will soon be over, yeah? Anya murmured with a smile. Her eyes were black and bottomless pools. Her skin was alight, glowing, incandescent. A thought flickered through Juiced's mind, beautiful as the moon. Anya shifted the boy's weight to her arms. Don't look, she murmured against her hair. Now, she said to Hode, pick up the knife. Thank you so much if you made it this far. This is the end of chapter one. My name is Alex, and I will be trying to do these recordings semi-often. I don't know how much I can do. I'm going to school right now. Um, I'm also working, so this is just something that I'm trying to pick up on the side. But I really do appreciate anyone who has listened to this. Um, I know I've made a lot of mistakes. I did a lot of editing what I could, but I think it'll just get better with time. So, once again, I appreciate it, and you have an amazing day.